If you're able to take even 20 to 25% of the knowledge from this video and implement it into your next Soliki game, I guarantee you your mid game is going to be a lot cleaner, smoother, and things are going to come together quite nicely. Let's get into the details. Lane assignments are one of those invisible concepts that people really struggle to A, identify in the post-game review, but even when pointed out, even struggle to mentally reconcile and understand. So I'm going to really take my time and don't worry, we're going to be going through plenty of examples. What you'll realize is that a lot of your mid-game problems, whether you're late to plays, you don't know where to be, you have no tempo, you have no control, you can't necessarily get to the fights even though you know you want to be at the fights, a lot of this potentially is likely coming from your lane assignments. Now, a lane assignment is simply just who goes to what lane or who matches who. That's a very simplistic way of viewing what a lane assignment is. Lane assignments matter because they dictate the three major aspects of the mid game. Who gets vision control and where, what objectives can or can't be contested, and number three, what waves you do or don't get access to. Now, when it comes to lane assignments, there's this baseline level of knowledge that we're gonna hopefully be able to get across in this video. And I would say that's the first 50% of it. The second half, the other 50%, really scales with game understanding. So the better you are at League of Legends holistically, the better your win con assessment is, understanding of matchups, understanding how comps fundamentally interact, the more creative you can, or the, the deeper you can go, I guess, with lane assignments. So in my eyes, it kind of has an infinite skill cap, right? No matter where you're at in your journey, if you're a master player, grandmaster player, challenger player, pro player, there is always something creative you can do within the realm of lane assignments that can give you a bit of an edge in the mid game. So this is not really something you just, you get and you know everything. It's, it's kind of like a never ending journey and just slowly adding to your knowledge base. Now, a common question is what are the key variables that actually go into lane assignments? Now, the three major variables are number one, who beats who in the side, who gets prior, who wins trades. Very simply, if I go to a lane, do I get priority on that person or do I not get priority on that person? This is the first major piece of information. Number two, who has TP? This one's, I would say, a little bit more obvious. If a Baron is coming up and we're 25 minutes into the game, do I really want to be in bot with no TP? Probably not. Vice versa, if I do have TP, maybe I want to be on the side away from the next neutral objective such that I can pressure the other side of the map, yet still attend that neutral objective. And number three, what is the next neutral objective? If the next neutral objective is Baron versus Dragon or, or uh, you know, Dragon versus Grubs or whatever the hell it might be, it's important to note or at least be somewhat aware of what the next neutral objective is because this is going to dictate who needs to be where on the map. Let's go ahead and get into the examples. We're going to be starting off with a very basic rudimentary example, lane swapping and lane assignments 101. In this particular example, we're playing Yasuo and we're fed. We're playing a champion that fundamentally thrives in the side lane. So when you're playing champions like Yasuo who want to be in the side lane, same thing for Akali or Yone, any of these kind of mid laners that thrive in the side, we really want to make sure we're not wasting any time staying in mid lane because again, any opportunity to be in the side, we're going to get more prior, more shove and move potential, more pick potential, everything will be easier. Now in this particular example, our bot lane had just lost their tower. So in reality, what should happen is that we should be getting into the into the side lane. Our MF should be going mid to match the enemy AD carry who had already swapped mid after breaking that tower, such that we're going to be able to, you know, thrive in the side lane. MF is going to be able to get more farm and MF isn't going to be as vulnerable um, in mid lane than she would be in the side lane. Now, in this particular case, because the Yasuo was busy kind of flaming people, et cetera, et cetera, they weren't thinking about swapping the lane assignments. They end up TPing mid for whatever reason. And now MF is in a very vulnerable position bot, feels very scared to continue to shove out the wave, probably isn't going to get access to all of the farm. And we're in this really weird scenario where we're trying to make this play on mid. We really can't because we don't have a long lane. We're very limited in what we can do into the Tristana. And, you know, in an alternate reality, our MF could easily die to the opposing mid laner. I've seen many, many examples um, when the lane assignments haven't been swapped up where the AD carry then gets ganked either by the jungle or the, the opposing mid laner and just dies. I think in my last video that I made, uh, a very similar example happened where the enemy Yone just killed our AD carry in the side lane because they were stuck versus a Yone as an immobile AD carry. In this particular example, the Katarina definitely could have flanked and killed the MF. She didn't for whatever reason. We just got away with it. The other reason this was actually a really great opportunity to swap the lane assignments in this specific case is because we're in base. So if we were really on point with our lol states here, we could have communicated well in advance, told our pinged our MF to go mid. In this case, this client was not using their lol state. They were typing in chat about some crap that happened before. And because they were checked out, they failed to swap the lane assignments. This would have been a beautiful El Clasico swap. 
but we failed to do so. So this is a really great example of lane assignments 101. So this one's a little bit more of a complicated example. Essentially to lay the, lay the foundations here, we have Dragon coming up in about a minute. We are very, very strong as a Yasuo. We are on two items, four and one, absolutely killing it. Now the key variable to note here, there's two key variables. Number one, Dragon coming up in about a minute. We've got, we've got TP, whereas our Gragas doesn't. So in an ideal world, we want to be on the side away from the next neutral objective, knowing that we have access to TP, and especially because we're playing a side laner or a champion that can thrive in the side lane. Now, in this particular case, it's very, very good for us to go top because either way, whatever our choice is with the neutral objective, whether we give it or whether we contest it, it's going to be quite favorable. And so, for example, if we went topside and we chose to give that dragon, we can maximally trade off that dragon for a potentially a tier two topside because us and the Evelyn can really maybe dive whoever's on topside or make a play or make some sort of play around the tier two. Alternatively, if maybe... Um, uh, we wanted to contest the dragon, we could make the Shen react all the way to tier two so we don't miss any farm and then shove and move down or just TP to the fight later on. It gives us many, many, many options. In this particular example, the Yasuo failed to swap the lane assignments. So Gragas is now on the side away from the next neutral objective. We reset, we redeploy bot side. And now we're in this, bit of, we're in this really complicated scenario where Shen ults in, our Gragas is top side with no TP. And now we're in this really weird scenario where it's like, well, even if we were in the right place and even if we were mid, we'd be fighting at a man disadvantage. And imagine in an alternate reality, if we were topside, if, if we were top and Shen ulted in, we could literally get tier two and maybe even pressure a tier three. And if Evelyn was on the ball, we could even ping for assistance. And the first person that showed topside, we could just dive with us and the Evelyn. It would give us a lot more options from a macro perspective. So in order to come to this conclusion in the game, we would have had to gather multiple pieces of information. Number one, we would have had to be aware of what the next mutual objective is. We would have, number two, had to realize that we have the foresight that, that we have TP and our Gragas doesn't. And number three, actually find the opportunity to swap the lane assignment. And this was the opportunity right now because we're already in the area. We're already on this side of the map. It's very convenient for us to go top side, ping on my way top, ping back on Gragas, ping Gragas on bot side. And then this would have been a very clean transition. In this example here, we are in the mid game. And as a result, the AD carry and support need to be mid because they're going to generate a lot more control than we would. So what ends up happening, for whatever reason, our, the victor decides to deploy mid. And so now, because we're mid and we take the farm, the Caitlyn is left being like, what the hell? So the Caitlyn started pathing out of base, wanting to go mid, but, there, but now, now the Caitlyn's, well, there's no farm. Victor's already taken my farm. I gotta go somewhere. I need some sort of farm. And now we get stuck in this very weird scenario where we're matching the AD carry and support. The Rakan feels incentivized to protect the Caitlyn on topside because Caitlyn, you know, is quite vulnerable by herself as a relatively immobile AD carry. And now we're in this very weird scenario where we're struggling to get a bit of control because we're versing the AD carry and support. We're getting less prior. The Caitlyn is struggling to shove out the top wave because she's probably worried about getting one shot by the Malphite. And we're just bleeding controls. Now look at this. If we freeze from right now, look at this. Caitlyn's unable to shove out top. We're unable to shove out mid. So we're actually losing prio in two lanes. When in reality, if we were the one top side, we would be completely fine into the Malphite that's been stacking armor into the Aurelia. And the Caitlyn and the Rakan would have got prior onto this Jin because they, they were actually winning lane and they would have got prior and would have been able to move in here, establish control. We would have already been shoving out here. The entire top side would have been ours instantaneously. So this is just, again, a very clean example of how one decision to not swap up the lane assignments is making our Caitlyn's life miserable. We're getting less access to ways. We're getting less vision control and we're getting just less priority and have less ability to move into the river. Now, earlier on in that game, in this example, what you can see is that our Aurelia doing a very good job on Bork. This Malphite is starting to get a bit of armor, has the, tar the, the Tarbies and the Cloth armor. In this particular scenario, the bot lane tower is now broken. So Caitlyn needs to be the one mid because in the side lane, she's going to be very vulnerable, especially to AZ. What ends up happening here is we base and this Victor decides to TP mid, even though Caitlyn has already shoved out bot and is on the way mid. Now, the gigantic brain play here would actually be to, instead of us go bot, especially because the wave is already here, we should actually deploy top side. Aurelia is already basing. Ping Aurelia bot, we go top. And we get the Aurelia to match the Z and we match the Malphite. Now, that is a very, very advanced decision because you would have to have a lot of information. Number one, you would have to realize that Aurelia destroys the Z. 
you would have to realize that we beat the Malphite significantly as a victor who's stacking armor. And you would have to realize that the Kaelin had already shoved out bot and was already moving mid. And because the bot lane tower is broken, the AD carry supports are going to match mid. Now, because we team me mid, Caitlyn is left being like, well, what the hell? What do I do? I've got no, no more farm to go bot. You know, I need to be on mid. So now we're going to be in a scenario where we're going to be sharing XP with the Caitlyn. Caitlyn's got no access to ways. Caitlyn's just getting further and further behind. And we're in this bit of a weird scenario where we don't even beat Zed in the side lane as a victor here because, you know, I mean, you know, Zed in the side lane here is really quite threatening, especially on Eclipse. So imagine in an alternate reality where we weren't even here, even if Aurelia died on top side, it is what it is. We could be running top. Aurelia can go bot out of base. We could be matching the Malphite. Aurelia could be shitting on the Zed. This would be an entire different scenario. So this one, albeit, is quite complicated. Look, I would say the, the, the entry-level way of conducting this scenario could have also been not TP mid, chill, because we've already got a lot of control here, we could even go out of base, maybe take Krugs, or just hover around the area here, establish a bit of a control with our team, maybe lay down a control ward, relax, wait for the wave to come out, and then catch a wave shallow. That would have also been good, but we literally probably made the worst possible decision by taking Caitlyn's farm, wasting our TP, and then, you know, not swapping with the Aurelia, which would have been the bigger brain play. One more thing to add on to this play, what you'll notice when it comes to swapping lane assignments, the best time to swap the lane assignments is when you're coming off a deployment. So one of the habits that you guys hopefully uh, try to develop is whenever you're upon a recall, rather than just looking at your gold and what item you're going to buy, you should also be factoring in other two other variables. Number one, what is the next neutral objective? And two, should I be looking to swap the lane assignments as a result of that? And so, yes, you probably also need to be looking at what towers are broken and, and where everyone is. But if we had actually built this habit in the lol stage to be considerate about our lane assignments, rather than just jump to the automatic conclusion that we need to be going back mid, we can save ourselves a lot of trouble, especially off these deployments. This is the time in the game to really be considerate of what the lane assignment should be, rather than just in the middle of a lane phase while you're just trying to trade with someone. So this is a bit of a complicated example. Now, what I want to take away from this specific example is break down the chain series of events as a result of not having the correct lane assignments. So we're 18 minutes 30 into the game. Our team gets a few picks. We use this as an opportunity to get the next objective, which is the dragon. Now, because the dragon is now uncontested, we get free access to the dragon. The next objective after this dragon dies is not going to be the next dragon. It's actually going to be Baron because we're at 18 minutes, 30 into the game and Baron's more than 20 minutes. So given we're not, no one's contesting this, we can actually allocate or we should be allocating a proportion of our mental stack thinking about what the next lane assignment should be. Like where are we going to go after we kill this dragon? Now, in this point in time, for whatever reason, the Draven doesn't shove and rotate over. He tries to greed mid tower. I don't know. And the Draven gets picked. So you'll see here, this is where the chaos begins. Instead of Mundo going bot side to answer bot to shove out bot wave and us cover mid while Draven is dead, the opposite happens. Mundo then goes mid, which doesn't really make sense because we're way better at covering mid than Mundo. Mundo's probably better in the side than us. And now this is where the complication, this is where the game gets very, very messy. So we go bot, Mundo starts to cover mid. In, re in reality, we should have been covering mid wave until Draven comes off uh, the death timer. Then we can go top, Draven can come mid, and Mundo could then shove that one all the way out and get a reset of his own. So we shove out bot. Mundo starts fighting mid for whatever reason. We get our reset. Draven is on the way back mid, which is exactly where he should be. Given 80 carrying supports get the most control mid. And we realize we're the ones that got to be topside because Baron is the, is the next objective. And... You know, we don't have TP and Mundo is better in the side lane than us. And also we don't really do well into Jason bot. And we want to match our counterpart, which is the Oriana. Now what happens is that because we were the one who shoved out bot, Mundo doesn't want to go bot because the wave's in Narnia. The wave's all the way over there. Now in reality, Mundo should theoretically reset and redeploy mid or bot later on. But instead, Mundo starts to run topside. So now we're in this pickle, this conundrum where no one is bot, Mundo is topside with us, and we're both sharing the XP on topside. We should have, in this lull state, taken control, ping the Mundo bot side to give him an indicator that someone needs to go bot and it should not be us as the mage into Jace. So as a result, if we actually follow this one out, we shove out top, we share the XP with the Mundo. Draven dies mid again. Now, for whatever reason, you know, we give the lane to, to Mundo, Mundo shoves it out, Jace is on our tier two bot, gets a free tier two bot, which is an absolute disaster. We compensate for the Draven dying. I think we also take this fight and die on the back end. It's getting very, very messy. 
Now, to make matters worse, off this reset, because Jace is still bot and no one was answering, Draven felt it was necessary to defend bot and defend the, defend the inhib. So Draven now goes bot. Because Draven's already there, he's probably not thinking too deep about the lane assignments, as a Draven player <laughs> typically doesn't do. Um, Draven ends up shoving bot all the way out. Now, because Draven is shoving the wave all the way out, Mundo doesn't want to go bot because he's, you know, Draven's already shoving it out. It's better for you to go mid, you're, you're, uh, us as the player deploying mid. So now Mundo is going topside. Now we're in this really, really shitty scenario where our AD carry, our strong AD carry is on bot side. Our Mundo is top, even though he has TP coming up. And, and I, I think what happens here is that Draven dies bot again. And now the game is completely imploded. This was all off the back of all the way back here, us failing to swap the lane assignments, get Mundo bot side. We bamboozle the Mundo, but us going bot, failing to communicate to our Mundo that he needed to go bot. And now this is where the whole conundrum begins. So a lot of the time people get to this point in the mid game and say, well, Curtis, what do I do here? How do I solve this problem? Well, to be honest, there isn't really a there isn't really a solution. You you know the we're in an alternate reality where everything is inherently messy because we failed to fix the lane assignments. Now, in this particular example, we're playing Victor. Now we have a Garen who's doing quite well on the side lane, who has TP coming up soon, and the next major neutral objective coming up is Baron. So we should be trying to make a concerted effort to get the Garen in bot and make sure we are playing mid to top with the team. Now, what ends up happening instead is that we see a play, even though it wasn't the right play to go for, we TP in. We still have more than enough time to swap the lane assignments, tell Garen to go bot, and we can go topside. But now we're in this very awkward scenario where we've actually, because we've TP bot and we stayed bot and we didn't make the effort to swap the lane assignments with the Garen, Garen now is incentivized to go top, even though Baron is up. We're bot with no TP, and we're feeling really stressed because now we're bot with no TP. If we stay bot, the enemy could even potentially Baron, or they're going to get a lot of control around the Baron. And if a play happens topside, we have no impact. Now, to make matters worse, because we're on bot side, you know, our team is incentivized to fundamentally hover the mage because the mage is going to struggle in the side lane. So the Xin Zhao and the Nami and everyone is trying to hover us on the side because we need help against the Gwen. But this is where we can leave ourselves exposed to the enemy getting counter barons on the other side of the map. So we've actually, in a way, indirectly incentivized our team to play to the wrong side of the map away from the neutral objective. Now, worst case scenario is that the enemy instantly punish us with a baron on the other side of the map. But, you know, in an alternate reality, though, Let's say the, the best case scenario, let's say the enemy don't counter Baron, we get this kill. We can't really turn this kill into much because there's no neutral objectives around us. If we had got this kill on top side, let's say Xin Zhao was hovering us on top side and we got this pick on top side, we could even potentially turn this one fight into a Baron because Garen would have wasted time on bot. We would have killed the enemy on top side and then we can turn that into turn that, turn that man advantage into a potential Baron play. And so this is another classic example where the client in this particular case wasn't using the lol states to actively be intentional about swapping those lane assignments when we had the opportunity to do so all the way back here. And so now we're in this really awkward scenario where we're stuck in the side lane with no TP, Garen's top on the side of the next neutral objective. It's an absolute disaster. So this one again is a little bit more of a complicated example. There was a bit of a chaotic fight happening in the bot river here. We are 19 minutes into the game. We do have TP. Our vein is top shoving it all the way out. I think it was a vein top in this game and our team ended up winning this team fight in the river. Now, realistically, after this fight, we should be now determining the lane assignments. Who needs to go where? Now, bot lane tower is dead. The lane assignments have been swapped up. Jin is now mid. So we should be getting our Kaisa and Seraphine mid, and we should be using this as an opportunity while the enemy opposing Akali mid and, and jungler are dead to shove our bot all the way out. Now, in this particular moment, the Syndra failed to use the lol states. Kaisa ends up going bot, and Kaisa realizes halfway, wait, I shouldn't be the one bot. I want to be the one matching the Jin. I don't really feel safe enough shoving out bot. And so now Kaisa ends up coming mid, and now we're in this weird scenario where Kaisa didn't shove out the lane, shove out the way far enough because she didn't really feel safe enough to do so and wanted to match her counterpart mid. By the time we realize that we should be bot, we've missed our opportunity to shove out the wave because the enemy all redeployed back on, on the map, and now we're massively behind in tempo. And then we realize, oh shit, yeah, we need to go bot, and we go bot, but we're so far behind in tempo. It's taken us so long to realize where we need to go that now the next play is happening on the other side of the map. And so we decide to TP to the next play, but we haven't even been able to shove out our way fully. And now we're bleeding farm.
And so this one is a little bit more nuanced in the sense that we're not like losing the game in the sense that like we, we end up being in the right lane assignment, but the way we got in the lane assignment was incredibly inefficient. And this is not really going to bite us in the ass immediately. It's going to bite us in the ass in the long run because we're slowly going to bleed farm. And something that I realize or people don't fail to realize with poor lane assignments or those transition periods in the game is that yes, they, they do eventually get into the right lane assignments, but it takes them so long that the consequence of their actions is that they're going to be late to plays. They're not going to be able to shove out waves all the way because they're, they're just going to be, again, not have the, the, the time to do so. And over time, they eventually bleed farm, bleed XP, and they get further and further and further behind. They have to do these weird compensate TPs. They can't find reset windows. Everything just essentially feels discombobulated. Everything is very complicated. And you get yourself into these unsolvable problems. So this one, again, is a little bit more nuanced, but it really highlights those, again, transition periods that weren't really utilized properly. So one of the major patterns or trends that you would have noticed or should have noticed throughout all of these examples is that the moment to sort or think about the lane assignments was within these lull states where we're coming off a deployment or a reset. This is the opportunity where we can actually allocate a lot of our mental stack or mental capacity towards thinking about where should we be on the map. And so for you guys watching, again, your lane assignments don't need to be perfect. They just need to have some sort of intention. And I've found that the majority of the league community can actually come up with a good solid baseline hypothesis about where they need to be on the map. It's just that they haven't built the habit of asking themselves that question, where should I be? And so again, to summarize those key variables that we mentioned before, thinking about what the next neutral objective is, thinking about who can match who in the side and thinking about who has access to TP can really point you in the right direction. Now, a common question is, Curtis, well, how do I actually go about improving at lane assignments? The no bullshit ultra practical way that I recommend to most clients, and I, again, I'm going to sound like a bit of a broken record here, is that I would recommend using your emotions via the reverse engineering technique to identify moments in the game that felt awkward. So you might get to 20 minutes in the post game review and you're like, I remember this part of the game, this like this 20 minutes, 23 minutes, this felt really off. Something was off here. I was, I was late to plays. It felt like we had no control. Everything felt really uncomfortable. This is where I would use those emotions to then go in and do some investigation. How were the lane assignments here? And what you'll often find is if you have these awkward scenarios, like you're feeling like your emotions, like you genuinely feel awkward in the mid game, chances are a lane assignment or a deployment on the map was probably incorrect. Secondly, we can actually objectively use these markers as a sign to investigate. If you are late to a play or a team fight or an objective, could be a lane assignment problem. Um, did you feel as though the enemy was always having move off sides and you were always reacting to ways in the side lane? potentially could be a lane assignment problem. Not having any control of the map and you feel like you're just really struggling to get vision control, potentially could be a lane assignment problem. Being stuck in the side versus a losing matchup, or maybe you're on the, the side of the, the wrong side of the map with no TP, potentially a lane assignment problem. You gotta remember guys, your lane assignments, like I was mentioning before, don't need to be perfect. They just need to have some sort of sense behind it or some baseline hypothesis needs to be made you know, yeah, sure, in the long run, we do want to look to perfect our lane assignments, and there is a high skill cap to this particular skill. But, um, you know, you got to start somewhere, guys. you got to start somewhere. And if you can start to implement this in your lull states, you're going to see a noticeable improvement in your mid game. Good luck with your solo queue, guys, and I'll see you for another video soon. Cheers. Don't forget, guys, to check out our school community. This is where you can actually have high quality discussions about the game. None of that bullshit about, you know, complaining about meta, complaining about the rank system, complaining about loser's queue. This is where it's at, guys. I'd love to see you there. The link is in the description below.